Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Reading from the Shalom Missionary Baptist Church at 106 County Road 1111, Atlanta, Texas, zip code 75551. I am your host, Pastor Lusco Maxi. To the Shiloh Church family, may God bless you, may God keep you. Let us keep praying that soon we'll be back together again. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come to you once again with our heads and humble hearts. Thank you for another day of fellowship, another day of friendship, Father God. Thank you for another Sabbath day, a brand new day we've never seen before, a day that wasn't promised to us, not guaranteed, Lord, but only because of your grace and mercy. Let all say thank you. Father God, you bless, Father God, all those that are sick, whether they be in the hospitals, whether they be homebound, Father God, even in the jailhouse, Father God. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Touch them with your healing hand of mercy. That Father God, you may heal them if it be your will. Father God, bless all the students, Father God, whether it be college level, Father God, or IFD level, Father God. Bless them during this pandemic, Father God, for their outbreaks in the schools now, Lord. But Father God, put your protection around them, Father God. The teachers also, Father God, protect them, Father. We ask this in your name. And Father God, bless the President of the United States, Father God, and all the dignitaries local and nationwide, and even worldwide, Lord, that are making decisions that you will guide them, Father God, that will call on you and trust in you. But most of all, Father God, have faith in you that they will do the right thing for that, Lord, we say thank you. Father God, bless those that travel down the dangerous highway, Lord. Guide them, Father God. Put your hand on the steering wheel, Lord. Ride with them, Lord. Take over. But Father God, there's danger everywhere. But Father God, with you, there is no harm that can be upon us, Lord, for that we say thank you. Father God, bless every preacher, pastor, Father God, we preach a word this morning, that you would touch them all and give them something to say, Father God, that we might say the right thing that you want us to say, not what we want to say, what you want us to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. But most of all, we thank you for your daughter and son, Jesus, and what he did in the old record cross, Lord, he devoured all our burdens, that we might have a right to the tree of life. For that, Lord, we say thank you. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading tomorrow, this morning will come from the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Hebrews, chapter 11. Begin with verse 1. Hebrews, chapter 11. Beginning with verse 1. Amen. And verse 1 reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. And look at verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. May God bless his word. I'd like to use for a subject for just a little while. Faith, an invisible force. Faith, an invisible force. We're still on the topic of creating a healthy church. To create a healthy church, we need to strengthen our faith in God. So now prepare your hearts. It's time for a word from God. Faith is an amazing power. Faith is something invisible, not yet seen. Hear what I said? Invisible, not yet seen. In other words, you've got to have faith. You had not seen it come to pass yet, but have faith in God that he will see you through. Church, we must exercise the use of faith every day. However, some of us have chosen to put our faith in man instead of putting our faith in God. Now, if you're wondering what's wrong with believing in man, the answer is man will 
will let you down. But God will lift you up. Somebody say amen. Man is self-serving. God is for serving us. Man has a hidden agenda. And eventually man will destroy himself and you if you believe in him. On the other hand, God doesn't have a hidden agenda. God only wants what is good and best for us all. God wants to serve you, not destroy you. We want good things for our children. Well, your Father in heaven wants good things for us. He'll sure. Now, what can we do without faith? The answer is nothing but faith. By faith, the world was made. Let's look at the scripture and see how God feels about faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Church hope is faith related to the future. Conviction is faith related to the present. Did y'all hear what I said? Hope is faith related to the future, but conviction is faith related to the present. Now watch this. My hope is that everything will turn out well, but my conviction is that I already see evidence that God is working on our behalf. Somebody say amen. So faith is the confidence that you have placed in God. Even before you have the evidence that he is real. Let me repeat that now. Faith is the confidence that you have placed in God. That even before you have the evidence that he is real. Confidence that beyond a doubt, God will take care of you. Faith is a strong belief, a powerful belief, that God, that God is real. A conviction that is true and that it is real. God is no plaything. He is no fate. He is real. An unusual feeling. Lord, help me today. That there is no need for worry. Nothing that the Holy Spirit is there waiting on us to accept him. Now, if you still were in church, well, I advise you to check your faith. Let's look at verse 2. For by it, talking about faith, the elders obtain a good report. So we see here that these elders were condemned, commended, excuse me, for their great faith by receiving the Lord's approval. If your faith is good, you will receive God's approval. Now, can he see your faith in him? Uh, does the Lord see your knees? Lord, help me today. Knocking when trouble comes knocking at your door. Or do you have the faith to face it head on? That's having faith in God. Look at verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. For all that many days. In other words, church, God made this universe with the blast of his nostrils. God made everything in this world by faith that man live and breathe. Can you see your breath? The answer is no, it's invisible. But you know it's that. It is by faith, church, that God will heal your aching body. It is by faith that he woke you up this morning and you thought it was a long clock. It was by faith that you are able to earn a living on your job. Faith is an invisible force. Matter of fact, faith is a force we reckon with. God made you, so why worry? Let's look at some of the examples of faith in the Bible today. Each time you see the word faith, I want you to underline it. 
I want you to highlight it. Amen? Verse 4 simply says, By faith, Abel, all not the God, a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which I obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying to his gift, and by he being dead, yet speaketh, Lord, help me. By faith, Abel gave God his best offering, so God was pleased. Now I have a question, church. Are you giving God your best offering? Church, are you giving God what's right? Or are you giving God what's left? Y'all still ain't praying for me. Brother Davis, Brother Taves, give God what's right before you pay your bills. Y'all ain't praying for me now. Not what's left after you pay your bills. Brothers, I thank you. Do you believe he'll open up the storehouse and pour out many blessings? If you don't believe that, that's why you don't, Lord help me, that's why you don't tithe. Now, if you don't believe faith is an invisible force, God can't help you today. And I can't help you either. I said, if you don't believe that faith is an invisible force. God cannot help you. That's because your faith is not in God. Look at verse 5. It says, by faith, Enoch was translated or converted that he should not see death and was not found. Lord, help me. Because God had translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Church, can you say you please God? Enoch did not experience death. He simply disappeared into the heavens while he yet still lived. Now God took Enoch because Enoch pleased him because he placed his faith in Christ and the cross. Now my question is, are you pleasing God? Does your way and your attitude please God? Better yet, what do you do when no one is watching? Can God trust you when no one is watching? Look at verse 6. But without faith, there's that word again, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe, must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Not seek him every nine then, but seek him all the time. Faith is at any time in anything other than Christ and the cross displeases God. Faith at any time in anything other than Christ and the cross displeases God. And brothers and sisters, you don't want to displease God. Brother Jackson, I have what I call in all the time faith in God. Even when things were dreary in my life. Oh, y'all didn't know I had dreary days? I trust in God. So how do you please God, church? And please God with our faith in Him. And this verse says it's impossible to please God without it. The other key word is believe. Faith and belief are one and the same. Faith means you believe. Believe means you have faith. Now, if you want your reward, seek Him diligently and seek Him daily. I say it now. Seek Him diligently and seek him daily. Not just every now and then when you're in need of something. Even when everything is going well. Seek God. Look at verse 7. By faith, Noah, being one of God of things that not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Noah's 
faith is called faith in action. Noah had faith in action, working faith. Noah built an ark to save his family for reasons not even seen yet. And he did it all by faith in God's word. So the home, even though he had never seen rain, y'all ain't praying for me, Noah had faith in God. So he built the ark because of a coming flood. He'd never seen rain before. Church, are you exercising your faith in God? Or are you just sitting, Lord help me, on your faith? Even worse, are you getting by on someone else's faith? Somebody might think I'm talking to somebody else, but I'm talking to you. Or are you using somebody else's faith to get by? Other people are praying for you and you won't pray for yourself. But you are too lazy to exercise your own faith. Church, are you trusting in somebody else trusting in God? Watch this now. Or are you trusting in God for yourself? Or are you trusting somebody else trusting in God? Or are you trusting in God for yourself? Because without your faith, it's impossible for you to please him. Somebody's still not listening, so I'm going to move on, y'all. Look at verse 8. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called out to go into a place, which he should after receiving for his inheritance, he obeyed, and he went out, not knowing where he went. In other words, only by faith, Abraham left his home and went to another land that he knew nothing about, not even knowing where he was going. But by obedience to God, he received his inheritance. Somebody say amen. So here we see the Real faith causes obedience. And by obedience, you are compelled to do what God wants you to do. I didn't say what you want to do, what God wants you to do. Then surely your reward will come. Let's look at verse 11. Through our faith also, Sarah. Her separate sweet sprint, oh, help me, to conceive seed and deliver of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised him, promised her. Now, Brother Bart, we're not always faithful to God, but God is always faithful to us. Somebody say amen. You see, Sarah was past childbearing age. In other words, she was old. But she bared a child through faith in God. Do y'all get the picture yet? Or you understand how important faith really is? Now talk about that same child. Look at verse 17. By faith, Abraham. When he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he had received the promise, offered up his only begotten son. So when God tested Abraham, he offered up his only son. Because in his heart, Abraham believed that God would raise his son from the dead. He believed that God would raise his son from the dead. Now God didn't ask you to do anything that drastic. He only asked that you believe. Let me say that again. God didn't ask you or me to do anything so drastic to give a one of our children. He only asked that we believe in him. Now even though God stopped the event from happening, but in the mind of Abraham, it was already done. Somebody say amen. In Abraham's mind, in his heart, it was already done. God was only showing Abraham in the world what he would have to do himself. 
Oh my God. By sending his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, as a living sacrifice. See, he asked, he won't ask you to do something he won't do himself. Somebody say amen. So he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, as a living sacrifice for the sins of mankind. And that's why Jesus Christ died for us all with three nails and a cross. And he hung down, bled, and died. And he allowed us to be buried in Joseph's brand new bar of tomb. And his bar because he wasn't going to need a long church. And he laid there all Friday evening. He laid there all Friday night. He laid there all day Saturday and all Saturday night. But early Sunday morning he rode with all power. And I thank God he rose. And I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for Jesus. So church, if you still have doubt, if you still don't believe, that Jesus Christ sits high and looks low, then you still don't have faith. Because faith heals an invisible force. Because faith heals an invisible force. May God bless you. May God keep you as my friend. The door of the church open. Would there be one today that is willing to come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Come on your faith right now and accept Jesus Christ today. But there'll be one today. Jesus loves you. He's waiting for you. You just come. But there'll be one. Please don't wait for time and out on your side. Or perhaps for maybe next Sunday. But you're talking about seven whole days, church. A lot of things happen in seven days. So please accept Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior. May God bless you. May God keep you in my prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for health and strength. We thank you, Father God, for what you brought us from thus far. And we thank you for what you're going to bring us through in the future. Father God, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. But most of all, we thank you for your daughter and son, Jesus, and what he did in the Lord cross. That he bear all our burdens, Lord, that we may have a right to the tree of life. Let Lord we say thank you. Lord God, we ask you for traveling and mercy, Lord, we leave this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you, may God keep you. Until next time.